Hello everyone, my name is Jarok Mishra and welcome to my channel English Literature Education. Today we are going to talk about the wish to write a quality research paper in the domain of English Literature. First of all, I would like to introduce you all to the concept of writing a paper in English Literature. Writing a paper in English Literature is a different task compared to writing a paper in other subjects. For example, if I take uh, someone who is writing a paper in the domain of science, he or she will have to base his proposition on hardcore facts. Science believes in facts. It does not believe in your arguments based on abstract ideas. On the other hand, literature believes everything. It believes anything that you can make it believe. So a literature student will have to fund his proposition, will have to back his proposition with logical, valid and contextual arguments that he or she can construct. So, everything here depends on your wisdom, wit and writing. So, you must have a short idea, a simple idea of a research paper in English literature and it mainly depends on your arguments. So, what are the ways that can make a paper in English literature strong, sharp, valid and originally motivated? We will talk about this in detail in this video. So, let's get started. The first step to write a research paper is to choose a topic. And choosing a topic is a difficult task. Never take it easily. Always take it seriously. Because everything depends on your topic. How to choose your topic? This is a separate issue, but in short, I will make you understand how to choose your topic wisely and choose something that you can actually do. So choosing a topic depends on your expertise, expertise in the field of English literature. Some people are experts in Shakespeare, some people are experts in Marlowe, some people are experts in Wordsworth and many people are experts in many different domains of English literature. You have to narrow it down, break it down into different pieces and pick the most precise and closer to your mind piece for your research job. So suppose someone who has an expertise in T.S. Eliot. So can you write a short research paper within six to seven pages on T.S. Eliot? That will never be a wise topic because T.S. Eliot is something that cannot be covered in an entire thesis as well. So you have to break down T.S. Eliot into different pieces. So there are three major kinds that you can choose from. One is T.S. Eliot and his poetry. The second is T.S. Eliot and his plays. And third is T.S. Eliot and his critical faculty. So, someone with an interest in T.S. Eliot's poetry will tend to choose T.S. Eliot and his poetry and then he will have to further break it down into different pieces. For example, the Westland as a mirror to the contemporary society of England. The Westland as a mirror to hopelessness and despair in contemporary England. And there are many other ideas that you can generate and then you can work on that. So, you must have an idea how to do it. You have to be precise, you have to be specific and you have to do something that is original. And if you are doing a research that has already been done because many of the people have researched about many of the topics and finding something original and new, entirely new might be difficult. So if your research is something that has been done by many people in the past, you have to be doing something that might extend that idea to a further level. So always remember your research must contribute something new to the English literature fraternity. So this is how we are going to choose our topic. This was the first step and now we'll move to the step two. The second step is collecting information. Now that you have a topic at hand, you are going to research about something in the domain of English literature. The second thing and the important thing I must say you have to do is you have to collect as much information as possible. How do you collect information? There are two major sources. One is defined as primary source and one is defined as secondary source. You must be understanding it and for those who don't understand it, primary source is something that directly connects and is directly created by the person who is being featured in your topic. Suppose I'm uh, doing my research about T.S. Eliot, so my primary source will be anything written by T.S. Eliot himself. And secondary sources will be anything that contains T.S. Eliot as your subject. 
So someone else writing about Tuesilliot will be my secondary source. So you have to collect as much information as possible and keep in mind that you must collect your information for the research paper only from credible sources. By credible sources, I mean the websites which are authentic and which genuinely deal with the topic and the domain. You cannot pick a website which talks about science and with only one article about T.S. Eliot as your secondary source because that will be not so much credible and that will be disregarded. So be wise when you choose your primary and secondary sources. The second step is collecting information. And now we'll move to our third step. The third step is very important because in third step you actually plan your research. You create a plan of action for your research paper. How do you do it? You do it by visualizing a whole picture of your research paper, visualizing your entire research work in a frame. How to do it? You have to have in mind the topic that you have chose in first step. The second step, you have collected all the information, the primary sources, the secondary sources from credible resources available on the internet, available in your library, available anywhere that you want. And now you reach to the step third. And the third step is very important because here you have to just, you know, uh, before drafting your article, you have to create an entire plan the plan that should have a beginning that should have a middle that should have a conclusion and the plan that actually lets you know is this research topic viable for you will this research topic be driven to a conclusion by you and while creating the plan you have to be careful you have to be clever and wise do you have the ideas that support your proposition the center proposition that is in fact your title do you have the arguments to support your ideas that will support your chief proposition that is the title of your research paper and then do you have a clear conclusion in mind where do you want your research paper to go what do you want to prove by writing this research paper what conclusion are you going to give to your examiners to your fellow students and to the fellow literary people in your community so this is the thing that we do here with the planning of research paper and then next we move to the step four and now we come to the meat of your research paper this step is the most important thing because here is a place where the actual action takes place step four is writing the first draft of your research paper so before you write anything make sure you understand what you're going to write how you're going to construct your research paper the central idea behind any research paper in the world is it should have three major components and I think only three components. The beginning, the middle and the end. The title page is something that we all know and then we come to the beginning. In the beginning you have to write introduction, you have to briefly summarize your research paper, you have to briefly summarize the idea that you are going to drive by writing this research paper and you also have to let the examiners, the people who are going to read your paper, know what tools are you using. So in literature, there are three or four simple tools that we use. Analysis, comparison, and extensive review. So most of the times we have to do everything all together because it's going to be abstract. And then plan it, start writing. So, in introduction, you have to introduce the central idea of your paper, you have to introduce the tools that you are using to prove your idea, you have also to let there be a glimpse briefly of your conclusion. Then you move to the second phase in your research paper, that is where you build your arguments to support the central proposition of your paper. This is the middle part, this is also called the body part. In body part, you make your arguments to support the proposition that you are making in the title of your research paper. So you have to support this title by building, constructing strong arguments, stronger arguments and then the strongest of your arguments. So you have to keep the body to a moderate length where it will be possible for any reader of your paper to understand what are you trying to say. And then comes the conclusion part. In conclusion part, you have to give the idea where did your research paper go? From the beginning and then the middle to the end. Where does the conclusion of your research paper lie? What your research paper has proved? What new or what extension it has added? 
to the idea that you have propagated in the introduction and in your title. And then you have to give a list of references. While giving the list of references, you have to be careful. There are two major styles that we use. One is APA, that is called American Psychological Association. And the second is MLA, Modern Language Association. Anyone you choose, you have to be constant throughout your paper. So thus, you write your first draft. And after writing your first draft, you reach to the step five, that is reading and rereading your first draft. You have to be your first judge. You have to see and check for the possible loopholes in your body, in your introduction, in your conclusion. And then you have to fix, you have to amend those loopholes. You have to make sure that the arguments that you build in the body of your research paper should not be defeated. Because literature is about conjecture, literature is about contradicting the ideas. You have to make sure your ideas might be contradicted because it will be. But your ideas should not be defeated. Because if your ideas, any of your ideas, if that is defeated, your research paper loses its validity on the ground. Because if you can't stick with your ideas and arguments, your arguments can be challenged and defeated, the defeat is the invalidity of your paper. So make sure none of your ideas, none of your arguments are defeated. It may be conjectured, it may be contradicted, but it should not be defeated. And once you are satisfied with your draft, you can write your second draft or you can just make it final. You can finalize it and then print your research paper and do the required that is needed to be done with your paper. Either you have to submit it for your examination or you have to submit it to your department or anywhere. Do that with this. And in India, majorly, students are required to be present for verbal examination along with your papers. So if that is the case, you have to be highly prepared because questions can be asked from anywhere related to the idea that you're presenting in your research paper. So this was the simple method that we use to write a quality research paper. I hope this video will help you with your task and keep watching this channel for more videos like this. I'll be back again. Thank you for watching.